Hello, I'm JL, and tonight we bring you a conversation with Mayor Lisa of East Palo Alto. Hello, Mayor Lisa. How are you? Good, thank you. Tonight on our student panel, we have Yanelli, Sergio, and Juan. Um, I would like to start off by asking, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, so let's start off our conversation by asking um, a little bit about your background, like where did you grow up? I grew up in East Palo Alto. My family moved to East Palo Alto in 1967. Um, all of my elementary school has taken place in East Palo Alto. Um, I started out at Runnymede Elementary School. I attended Castaño, Brentwood, and for junior high, um, the school is now considered Ronald McNair, but it was Garden Oaks at the time. After Garden Oaks, I attended um, San Carlos High School before they closed it. How do you think growing up in East Palo Alto had an impact on you? You know, it, 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 had a, um, it definitely had an impact on me, and I think the impact really came from my mother. My mother was an educator, a single mother and an educator in the city. She uh, taught home ec at Ravenswood High School, so um, education was really important for her, and she made sure we read and were very active and stayed busy in the community. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Knowing these impacts, how, how did these impacts get involved to your uh, work as a mayor? So how did I get involved, or how did, like, growing up in um, the city? Like, these impacts when you were young, how did... You know, you know um, I think it just came from the fact that my mother was involved, so it was important for her to keep us involved in our community. So had it been by sports or whatever, feeding, uh, like, growing up, coming to our house, no one left my house hungry, and my mother raised six children. She was a single parent, but, she, you know, everybody was taken care of, and she made sure not only that, um, one of the jobs she did, she worked at the school age mothers program at SAMP and people still remember her because she would take the time to make a difference and work with the community. So I think that's what really impacted me and helped me want to make a difference in our community. When did you realize you wanted to become a mayor? You know, it, um, it just happened. Uh, I was attending meetings and complaining probably like most of us do when things don't go the way we want them to. And my daughter once told me if I wanted to make a difference, I needed to be at the table. It's easy to sit at home and um, question or complain, but people need to come to the table and be a part of the solution. So um, one of the council members asked me to join him on the council. And shortly after I became elected, he resigned. But it's still been a, a great experience for me. And has that motivated you to um, well, has the community of East Palo Alto motivated you to go into politics? It has. You know, so oftentimes you're, um, for me, I work for a venture capital firm during the day, so I'm outside of East Palo Alto. And oftentimes you hear this negative side of East Palo Alto, and I don't experience that. East Palo Alto is very different for me. I feel comfortable going anywhere and doing anything in the city, and I believe in it. And I like to celebrate the good that's happening. Mm -hmm. And I want people to know that there's a lot of good that's going on in the city, and we need to take time to, to actually celebrate that and share that with not only our community, our, but it has to go outside as well. Awesome. What are, what are some examples of, of things that are going on now uh, while you're mayor that are making a difference and, and you know, pushing that, you know, the, the view of like East Palo Alto, you know, transforming into a new city? You know, you look at the programs such as College Track. College Track is making a difference. It's taking students that would, you may not even have thought of going to college or thought you had an opportunity to go to college, and it's changing that. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the economic development within our city, making sure that our students are educated and then coming back and making a difference in the city. Not only that, we have programs like the Maker Space that I had an opportunity to go to today. And that's a program where Facebook and Stanford are coming together to bring technology to the elementary schools, and it's a pretty unique um, experience for them. And you may also be aware of Street Code. Street Code is um, providing coding for the community members for, so that you know we live in Silicon Valley where STEM and mm -hmm. coding is so important. Um, but to make sure that our residents are aware and get to practice coding 
and it gives them an opportunity to compete for jobs. Definitely. Yeah. Earlier, you mentioned that your daughter told you to go um, stand up. What were you doing earlier before? Um, um, I was probably one of the pe like I said, I probably was just complaining about things that I didn't like in the in the community, um, and working and taking care of my family. Um, my daughter also uh, made it through college track, so she's in a college track alum, um, and she's actually at USC grad school right now, and she still encourages me. Um, I had to to learn it's. Uh, really unique when um, the parent becomes the teacher. So she helps me a great deal and gives me direction and um, helps me out a great deal. Awesome. Yeah. What, what are, I'm just curious, like what, what, do you, what do you feel more, like most proud of so far that you've done personally? You okay. know, in government, it takes a little while. Things move a lot slower, but I think that um, we've done a better job of being, um, working with the, co the county so we're not so isolated. Mm -hmm. We're there and East Palo Alto matters. We're um, right here in Silicon Valley. It's important that people know that we're here and we don't always have our hand out, but we want to be good um, to, 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 be, to help other communities as well. So I think we've done a great job of that. Um, working with Facebook for me has been a good thing. Um, they really want to make a difference within our community. And like I said, I'm excited about Live in, Live in Peace. It's an organization mm -hmm. that I sit on the board for. They're teaching young people how to play music. They're just doing a lot of great things. And not only that, it's an organization that's taking young, young kids that would otherwise, some of them may be looking at going to jail versus going to school, and they're changing mm -hmm. their lives around and sending them to college. Those young people, again, are coming back to East Palo Alto and making a difference. East Palo Alto is changing the way that the world sees us. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's good. How do you feel about that? Like that must, that must be awesome to see. It is amazing to to know, you know, to go from that negative time that we were in to a place where it's positive. We know we we still struggle. We have areas that we're working on. A lot of people feel the pressure of having Facebook. It's a good thing to have Facebook, and then there's some pressure that comes from all the technology and all the people that are moving to our area. So, what do you think has caused this positive impact on East Palo Alto? You know, um, it's just people such as yourselves you know, making a difference. You care, other people care about the community, and we want to make a difference. And when you care about where you live, you put forth that effort. And um, it takes, it's a few people that make a difference. You have some bad apples, but I think we have more good people in our community than we have those that are causing a problem. Um, do you think over time East Palo Alto would be, um, would get rid of the negative comments that it gets? I, I would hope so. I hope I would hope that the reputation changes, but sometimes it takes a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. um, still today, when I hear people with the negative, I'm like, are, are you kidding? You have to come and visit. Mm -hmm. um, and those that haven't been there haven't seen it, but some that have come to visit, they see a different East Palo Alto. You can feel that East Palo Alto is a different place. Awesome. And what's your what's your vision? Like, what's left? What's left for you? Like, what, what? You know, there's still a lot to get done. You know, I, I, I say that I, I work in the, the private sector and things move a lot faster, but in this public sector, um, being in government, it takes a while to get anything done. You can think about it and it may take years for it to happen, but I'm looking for economic development and some prosperity there. I'm looking for jobs for the community um, so that we can make a difference. I want East Palo Alto residents to be able to afford the city we live in. Um, um, and that's going to be important. So getting your education and going to college is really important. But being able to attract businesses to the community is most important so that we can provide jobs um, that will provide a living wage that will allow, um, again, the residents to live there, to be able to afford the yeah. city they live in. Yeah. And um, how long is your term as a mayor? I'm only the mayor for a year. So okay. I became mayor in December and it goes to December. So. I feel like this year has gone by so quickly. And but in your term, do you feel like you've made an impact to East Palo Alto that it has been a positive turn? I hope so. You know, I try to show up and be available to the community and show up for different events and just to make a difference. So in the end, um, I don't know what's going on, but I hope I'm making a difference in the community mm -hmm. and that it's a positive difference. And I hope I'm being a role model, if nothing else, that um, young people can look up and say that you know there's something positive not only just from me but from the entire council right now 
What, what do you think isn't seen, like, what, like, from, like, people see, you know, what you do, but, like, uh, what do you think isn't seen that, you know, you wish people saw? Um, what would that, from the city itself? Just, yeah, from, like, um, you doing your job personally, like, what, what don't, like, people see? I, th I think uh, people don't get to see, like, the commitment that, that I have. Um, you know, I, I, I do this, um, being on the council doesn't pay a lot, but East Palo Alto really means a lot to me. Um, mm -hmm. I want to see East Palo Alto. I love the culture that's in East Palo Alto. I don't want to lose that. I want to keep that secret sauce that is the, 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 the multiculturalness of our community. I want to keep that. Um, but again, the, the things that I want to bring to the community will make a difference. Water, development, um, more education, to improve the educational system and help the Ravenswood School District. Um, those are the things that are going to be important. Um, do you think gentrification is stopping this culture from happening or staying in East Palo Alto? Gentrification is, um, is, is a, it's tough and it's not just happening in East Palo mm -hmm. Alto, it is happening regionally. And you know, for, so for me, I'm a homeowner, so I don't feel the same pressure as everybody else. For a homeowner, having Facebook and Google and all these other people close by, it's making my property value increase. So I'm really excited about this growth. I don't want it to grow so high till I, to where the point where I can't pay my property tax, but it's the renters that are feeling it. Mm -hmm. Because to feel the pressure and to see the rents go up, like I, I heard a story where the rent went up for one family $500 a month. Where do you find an extra $500 a month for rent? Mm -hmm. That's the part that's really tough. Um, but without the Facebooks, without the Googles, we wouldn't have the job. So there's some good things that, are, that they bring to the county, but you know, we're not leveraging, we haven't leveraged it correctly. Um, as elected officials um, and just cities in general, nobody's really planned and taken the time to think about affordable housing mm -hmm. and building the housing that's needed in our region. Without the companies here, I don't think we would have enough housing. Um, but with companies here, we're definitely lagging and housing is a number one concern. It's funny because today, um, my mentor actually mentioned that his friends he, he posted something on Facebook saying, oh, I never thought I'll see the day when um, East Palo Alto has Lamborghinis driving through it. And wow. it's because of the cost of gentrification. So I thought that was pretty interesting what you just said. But, but did the Lamborghini stop or did it drive right through? <laughs> <laughs> because we're, through, mm -hmm. we're uh, through city. A lot of people drive through our city to get where they're going. I don't know if a Lamb somebody with a Lamborghini actually lives in the city or were they shopping or what were they doing? Mm -hmm. But to see that, to be able to see a Lamborghini in our city, that's pretty unique. Yeah. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. So what do you plan to do after this one year term? So after my mayor year, I become a council member and I get to sort of relax. I'll still work on the things that are important to me. Gentrification, affordable housing, very important. Education, very important for the community. Um, I, something that drives me absolutely crazy within our community is blight. I, Absolutely, I can say I loathe to see people leave furniture and just junk mm. on the side of the street. That's not my city. I don't want to be um, the city where people can just come in and drop things off. I don't want that, so I want something different. Mm -hmm. um, and we continue to work on that. Um, homelessness and things like that are important as well. Um, you mentioned something about, gentr um, about education. Mm -hmm. What are your plans to help the, in the edu people in East Palo to get a a higher education? You know, the President Barack Obama has an initiative that will allow everybody to at least get an associate's degree, mm. and I think that's important. And I think I would go a step further for, for the educational piece. I think if, if you, the, the, right now in our country, we bring people from other countries to do engineering and different things like that. The focus should be in our country to make sure that our residents are educated and able and capable to do those jobs that we need um, to, to make our, our country function and continue to run. I'm, I'm glad that Obama's um, allowing people to do the A, but I feel like some people stop before they get into college. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes they have issues in high school and middle school, and sometimes children are dropping out, and it, it's occurring a lot in East Palo Alto. How are you um, going to fix that? You know, that thinking? is great. So the county and the city just um, collaborated together, and there was an $800,000 grant and it's called a, a SWAG grant, and it's really going to go towards those students who, it's a truancy program. So we want to make sure that the children that would, 
n otherwise have difficulty and may not graduate from high school, they have an opportunity to do that. So this program will help those that are credit deficient bring up their credits and give them coding experience and different things, but make sure that students are graduating on time. And I'm looking forward to that. I think it just started in, in May over at Green Street. So um, we're getting in the community and trying to make a difference. Nice. So I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. How has Facebook affected any of you? Anybody can take this question. How has Facebook, being Facebook, having Facebook right on the edge of our city, how has it affected you? I, I kind of want to start on that. I actually okay. just came from New York from, and uh, I'm working on a project with Facebook mm -hmm. and they kind of flew me out there and it was an awesome experience. So. Uh, they're giving me this project to work on, and uh, it's uh, like it's giving me more opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, I, and then I interned there two years ago, and it, it just exposed me to a lot of connections and just giving me experience. So when people look at my resume mm -hmm. and they see like Facebook, it's just like, like that wow, Facebook that's experience. It. Yeah, Did it help you with college. It, I, I, I would say so. I put it on there, um, but it's it's giving it's definitely giving me more opportunity and stuff like that. So. Great. Anybody else? On the other hand, Facebook has affected me negative t negatively. Mm -hmm. um, I lived in Menlo Park my whole life mm -hmm. and because of, well, it, Facebook has a big role in it besides all the other tech companies. Um, I had to move out due to the rent increasing way too high than 10% mm -hmm. and the landowner doing illegal actions towards it caused my family to just move out of the city and start fresh in a new city. Okay, so Facebook, the pressure of Facebook caused um, the rent to, to mm -hmm. increase. That was the landowner. That was the property owner too. Yeah. That took advantage of that. Anybody else want to answer that? Um, I live in Redwood City, so Facebook hasn't really affected me. Okay. <laughs> and um, how have you been affected by gentrification, if you have at all? Anybody? Um, I live in like the heart of downtown, so there is a lot of new buildings being built, and our rent has rise too. I live in a single parent, single mother household with, we rent my room to another woman and her son, and my uncle and my aunt both had to move in with us, so I share a room with two other adults. Um, my aunt lives in the living room, and it's been hard because I'm a teenager and I'm worrying about the rent and I shouldn't be worrying about that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I should be just like, you know, worrying about projects and all that at school. But there has been times when, well, a lot of times where my mom hasn't been able to afford the rent and she's, I've had to pull out of my own pocket to pay the oh. rent, to help pay the rent. It's hard, but we're living. Good. Well, that's why it's going to be important to have um, jobs with living wages so that our residents can afford the housing. By that time, like what would happen to the other residents? Like what, how much hope do they have left? Like are they not going to be able to stand in the same place waiting for their kids to graduate from college to and, help And them? that's the fear. That's something that we deal with every day. Um, as again, elected officials, that is mm -hmm. the fear. You know, we don't want to displace anybody. If I had my rathers, everybody would be able to stay. Mm -hmm. um, but I can't control the, the entire market. Like for a property owner, that is what, that's America. People like, that's the way they're gonna make their money. So um, I would hope that most would be fair mm -hmm. and I'll understand and not increase the rents too high. Um, but again, education is gonna be a piece that's gonna be really important. That's very interesting. Um, how about we give our studio audience some time to ask questions? I have one question. What is something you wish everyone knew about East Palo Alto? You know, I wish um, everybody knew that East Palo Alto is a great place to be. It is a, a wonderful city to live in. I take pride in it. Um, um, I once moved away and I couldn't, I wanted to move back. I couldn't wait to get home because I knew that East Palo Alto was where I had my group of friends, my family, my village that would help me raise my children and that's what happened in East Palo Alto. It's like no other city. Nice, very nice. Um, what do you want your legacy to be? You know, um, um, 
I've, I've said that's a difficult question, but I would hope that at, at the end that people know that I care about East Palo Alto and I've tried to make a difference. Um, that is definitely going to be, I want to leave East Palo Alto in a better place than when I entered the office. And um, what is the most pressing issue facing young people today and what advice would you give them? The, some of the things that are really important is um, education is going to be critical um, for those that um, are behind in units to get them up to speed to make sure that students are graduating on time and that they know that there's a path for college and that they have not only when they they, they have a path for college but there's going to be a career path as well outside of that it's like how do we decrease violence and make sure that you're safe when you're on the street that's, we want a peaceful place. So that's going to be the most important. Any other questions for me? Do we have questions? Anyone? One final question. What does living in East Palo Alto mean to you? For me personally, it means hope. That there is hope because of what you just stated. You, you are determined to put a good reputation on East Palo Alto. And all of these programs that are located there, such as College Track, um, motivates me and gives me hope that there is the future is going to be okay. Like we're going to be okay. We're going to make it. Uh, for me, it, it kind of gives me a sense of purpose because I see my peers and and they they some of them think they like like they don't like they're not thinking about college or they're they're not thinking about a, like a career, successful career. Mm -hmm. So it kind of it puts me in a place like. Like I want to inspire them so they can do what they want to do, no matter what. Like no matter what people are saying about East Palo Alto or the the facts, the circumstances. So um, it gives me responsibility and kind of I kind of got put in this place to be passionate and like uh, be inspiring to whoever whoever's looking up at me or around me. So good job. Anybody else? What is living in East Palo Alto? Well, you're in Redwood City, yeah. so you can tell me about yes. Redwood City. Redwood City. Living in Redwood City. I've lived in Redwood City my whole entire life. I can't imagine moving somewhere else, but probably I will have to when I move to college. But I love Redwood City a lot, and it's, it's home. Yeah, I'm, Redwood City has been my whole like my whole life. I've been living there since the since I was born. Uh, um, something that's really interesting is it's starting to change a lot more and they started making new buildings and it's looking a lot different. And since the um, prices for houses and the rent is rising, I feel like I might lose it. It's, a, it's um, scary, it's kind of scary. It's getting really overpopulated. A lot of people are coming in, new buildings. And um, Yeah, I think in, in a whole, we didn't really think about the people that would be moving, the number of people that would be moving to this area. And, you know, the county has said to each city that we're supposed to build affordable housing. So each city has been tasked with providing additional housing or some affordable housing. Now the task is to find the land and to make sure that happens. Um, but I think we all are aware of, of the issue of affordable housing and gentrification. Um, so I'm hoping that you'll all go to school and come back and make a difference in our community. Mm. One of you may even be the next man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Good. Do you have any other questions? Any other questions from the studio audience? No. Well, we can talk a little bit about street code. I know you're involved in street yeah. code. Can you tell me about tell everybody about a little bit about street code? Yeah. So street code is a is a program. Um, that two Stanford students started with, uh, it's under Live in Peace, and uh, it's basically teaching us, anybody from the community, for, for free, how, like, they're teaching us how to code. And that's such a powerful skill. Um, and I, they're doing it out of, like, they're really doing it from their hearts. Um, one, one of the founders is my mentor, and he, he really wants to make a difference here. And it's just awesome to see and awesome to be part of like the, the history of, of uh, seeing it grow and people going and making like really cool games and it's just, it's just really cool. Um, I'm actually more part of EPA now, I don't know if you want me to talk about sure. that. Sure. 
Uh, EPA now is a like a community organization and it's providing news to East Palo Alto in video form and writing on a website. And so what you mostly hear from East Palo Alto is like the shootings and and negative things that happen from and they're from outside like outside news uh, outlets. Um, so we're creating our own outlet in East Palo Alto and like recording the fair that happened um, and showing the world like look look at East Palo Alto look how look how it's growing and look at the awesome things where like people are doing it have been doing but it's just not being exposed so then that'll start to change the the perception of East Palo Alto and actually really show what's going on not just like a perception um, and so that's EPA now and Street Code which is awesome. A great program and that's again I think what we need to do a better job of is celebrating the good things that happen within our community. There are great a lot of great things that continue to happen in the city and it's unfortunate that the positive things don't necessarily happen in the news so I want to say to you and to the you know, that program it's so important to celebrate the good things that are yeah. happening within our community. Exactly. exactly. Yes. Anything else coming up for College Track? So oh, College Track is just really involved in the community. It opens up a lot of opportunities for us, um, such as interviewing you. Um, community service. Community service is a big thing. It's a requirement, and we also enjoy doing it. Can you tell me a little bit about your program? I believe some of you are in the Close Up program. Uh, and what yeah. do you do with Close Up? Uh, in Close Up, we talk about government, um, we debate topics, and we're going to fly out to Washington, oh, D.C. Wow. in the summer and meet a lot of college track students from different sites and debate with them, meet, visit monuments. It's going to be a lot of fun. And yeah. what are your topics that you're going to be discussing in D.C.? Um, well, it's just gentrification. Well, for me, gentrification is, has always been a big topic for me. Okay. Well, I'd like to thank you all for participating. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me today. This is important.